men are bastards. It's just how it is. Men are responsible for like 99% of all the worst stuff in the world. We're talking genocide, war, financial crimes, environmental destruction, terrorism, mass murder. In Sweden, 17 women are murdered every year by men they had a relationship with. Men are guilty of 80% of all violence and 98% of all sexual violence and abuse. Men are bastards. It's that simple. Not only in boardrooms, governments, defense agencies and cults, but in our private lives as well. In our homes, at work, at schools, bars and pubs, everywhere. We have some serious problems. Help. I know that when we talk about all this, most men start zoning out or shutting down completely. It's like nothing gets through. Hello, anyone in there? And I understand why. It hurts to be reminded about all the stuff that we know makes us feel like shit to be told we're part of the most destructive acts done against the planet, against women and everyone around us. How can we be expected to deal with that? We can't deal with it. And most important, we haven't dealt with it. So please, men, listen up. Stay with me. I'm part of a people's movement in Sweden called FATTA, working against sexual violence. And the part of the organization I work with, FATTA MAN, roughly translated to get it, man. We work in particular to get boys and men to understand the destructive norms that shape the ideas of masculinity. The kinds of things that lead to sexual violence. And above all else, how to act to change the situation. The movement has been very successful on issues of consent and saying no to sexual violence, which is great and important. But for us men, it's not enough to believe that all we have to do is tell other men no in a sharp voice. Quit raping, quit abusing. Because those actions are only the tip of an iceberg. Rape is the sharpest point on the mountain of problems men have deep under the surface. All this mess that's being told to everyone growing up with a wiener dangling between his legs but how, about how we should be and behave, that being a man gives you the right to violate whoever. Because research and statistics show that it's not psychopaths and outcasts who rape and abuse. It's guys like me and you and you because we're told it's just boys being boys. Our culture normalizes this behavior. Like, do you think it's a coincidence that a bunch of refugee, school, refugee centers, Islamic schools and mosques are being burnt down as we speak, one after another, at the same time as fascist parties are gaining power in Europe? No. It's that quiet chorus of, it's okay to do those sick things that encourages men to do what they've been doing. Because we're social creatures. We want to be part of the flock, to be loved and belong. We like to do what we're rewarded for by the people around us. So as men, it's no solution to say no. What we really need to do is find something to say yes to. What are you as a man really proud of besides your muscles and size of whatever, all those cliché things. Many just feel shame when you ask that question. I'm not proud of, proud of anything. I'm not worth fighting for. But when we look at small kids around us, baby boys, it's heartbreaking to think another generation of boys going to waste. And that's what we're changing right now. It's slow, but it's happening. And I'll try to tell you how. But first, let me describe our problems a little bit more. Men have relied on women for all the emotional work. We made them responsible for, for providing us with all the love and validation that we need. We put it on them to take care of us 
and solve our problems. And I think that's cheating, because we're grown men. We should be able to take care of ourselves, maybe even some other people. But I'm not here today to talk about the men's problems with women. We need to talk about men's problem with men. Because all these very serious issues that women have with men, men also have with other men. If we ask any man today, do you feel comfortable and safe in a group of men? I mean, really safe? Most of them will answer, no. And that's kind of mind-blowing, isn't it? What's wrong with us? That even we don't want to hang around with ourselves. For me, I think our work starts with learning how to trust other men. We need to understand that men are capable of supporting each other, maybe even loving each other. Women have been successful working together on their own to support each other in the fight for fairness, equality and survival. I mean, you heard about femi feminism, right? It's the bomb, I promise. And we men have a lot to learn from it. For me, these questions are a matter of life and death. I've seen a lot of dead men, not physically, but emotionally. Men who have given up, unreachable, stuck in their positions of fear of losing power, impossible to get to behind layer after layer of self-loathing, hopelessness, bitterness, shame and guilt. You've probably seen some of this too. Maybe have some of them close by, a father, a relative, a friend, or a colleague at work. I got it in myself too, and I fight it every day. It would be so easy to give up. This is hard, and men try to find ways to deal with it, like using sex, for example. I spent three years interviewing men at Europe's biggest brothel in Germany, trying to understand what sex means to men. It became my first documentary film, Like a Pasha. And you know the strangest thing I found out? Men's obsession with sex is deeply connected with their lack of contact with themselves. Men are trying to cut the corners in chase of a working formula to cope with life, instead of looking themselves in the mirror. It was easier for the men I met to have a working relationship with a random prostitute than with their girlfriends or wives back home. So relationships is where we men have to put in some real energy. We need to stop using women and start opening up for each other. In my work with Fataman, this is really important. For example, we got a group of Swedish artists together to make a song and a video about their challenges of being a man. It's called uh, It Starts With Me. You should check it out. This song has been a great way to start conversations with young men about manhood. It also shows them that these artists that they really admire have taken a stand. We also created a relay podcast format where men take turns in interviewing each other about how they became, became men, sex and violence and other important stuff. It makes it really easy to see that men are able to listen to and share with each other. We need to be reminded about this. In our work, I visit schools and other places talking about these things, and I realize that often this is the first time boys hear that they have an alternative, that they don't need to give up, that they can choose who they want to be, that we men can have access to all the humanity that's inside of us. It's a fantastic feeling to come with a key to open an important door for someone. It's the best thing in the world. But we need to be honest. So far, our strategy has been to internalize the failure instead of realizing that we already lost. And it's natural, because hopelessness for many it's the most unmanly thing. I swear, nothing is harder to accept for men than that we are losers. We would rather try to convince ourselves and everyone around us that we're right, 
even though the world is going down in flames around us, even though our children would rather turn to a teacher or basically anyone for help when they have problems, even though over half of us admit to not having any close male friends, even though we're going to live shorter lives than the women around us, commit suicide in greater numbers, drink ourselves into early graves, wreck our bodies, and live like the walking dead. So if you continue to play by the old rules, yourself against the world, you're going to end up standing there alone, without the love, camaraderie, compassion and support that's available to us from trusting other men. But if you're ready to start questioning and explore the possibilities we've been given, things will change forever. And then if there are enough of us who are convinced we're standing on the winning side, others will follow and we will win together. You are important in this, every single one of you. So, are you with me? Oh, one more thing. Of course we're not bastards. We've only been taught how to be bastards. It's totally up to us to change this. Thanks.